All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how we can make a simple coin counter game. In the coin counter game, what we do is we flip a coin 100 times and we're going to record how many times a tails, a tails was flipped and how many times a heads was flipped. To do this, I'm going to need to use the random function. So I'm going to import random first of all, okay, and then I'm going to set up two values or variables. The first variable is going to be used to record the number of heads. And I'm going to set that to zero first of all. And the other one I'm going, to I'm going to use is tails. So these are going to be used to record how many times a heads was flipped and how many times a tails was flipped in well, for, for every hundred flips I do. So I know I'm got to I know I've got to flip a hundred times. So I'm going to use a for loop for this. Um, so I'm going to go for i in range zero to a hundred. So i is a variable which starts off being zero and every time we loop through it's going to increment and it's going to keep incrementing until we get to a hundred. So this is my for loop. Now what I've got to do is flip the coin. So I'm going to say uh, my flip is equal to random dot rand int and I'm going to say zero to one. Now the idea here is that if the flip is equal to zero I'm going to say that is a heads, and if the flip is equal to one, I'm going to say that's a tails. So here's the check. If flip equals zero, remember that this is heads, so I'll stick in here a hash mark. So if it's heads, then I'm going to say heads plus equals one. So I'm just going to say heads goes up to one or increments by one. If it's not a heads, then the only other option is that it's a tails. So tails is going to be plus equals one. At the end of this for loop, I'm just going to print the result. Print heads count percentage i, because it's an integer, and I'm going to make that equal to heads. Oh, I've got to make sure I've uh, closed off the speech mark there and close off the brackets. Then I'm going to print tails count in the same way. Percentage i. Remember i is an integer. So tails. Right, so here's the program. Let's run it. So the first time I run it, heads is flipped 70, uh, 57 times and tails is flipped 43 times. I run it again. The results are slightly different. Now let's just check what's going on. So I'm, all I'm going to do here is flip I'm going to print the flip. So print the flip. So just so we can see the numbers that are being generated. And you'll notice the numbers are just zero, ones and zeros. So if I was to count down this list and count the number of ones, I will find that there are 54 ones. And if I was to count down this list and count all the zeros, I would find that there are 46 zeros. Because remember, zeros counts as heads, ones counted as zeros. Uh, sorry, start that again. A zero counts as a head, and a one is a tails. Now, if I wanted to say, uh, you know, add a little bit of extra sort of like, I don't know, excitement to this, let's say I wanted to count how many times the, the the coin landed on its side. Well, that would be simple because all I would have to do is go side or sides equals zero, change the flip to be between zero and two, and then. I would ha have to just extend this if statement. So now it's elif, because it's an else if, the flip is equal to 1. I'm going to add 1 to the tails. If it's not 0 or 1, then it must be on its side. So I'm going to do sides e uh, plus equals 1. So now I've got three options. I can then print the number of sides as well. So I'll just go sides and change this to sides run the program, uh, I'll get rid of the uh, print the flip thing actually I'll leave it in there for now so you can see it you should see numbers 1, 0, 1 and 2 and now we've got heads being the he wow it landed on its side more than it landed on anything else but we've got 33 on heads 24 on tails and 40 on sides and that's it so this, if you were to summarize this program we, we have an, a random number we associate that random number with an event 
and then we just record how many times that event takes place. Have a play around with this code and see if you can use it in anything, any kind of computing project that you might have to do.